Mike Owens here. Today I'm joined by Arnold Almighty Allen, who returns to action UFC 304, facing Giga Chikadze. Arnold, always a pleasure, my man. How are things are you today? Yeah, good, man. Cheers for having me on. Thank you. No, the pleasure's all mine. Um, You've obviously been off on the road doing your own thing over in the States and Canada, so how are your emotions ahead of a UK return? Yeah, it's good. It's always fun. it's always nice to fight back home in the UK. Uh, it's a bit crap that is, you know, I'm sure that was one of the questions coming up, but it's a bit crap that it's going to be, I think I'm going to be fine about 3am, but um, it is what it is. And, you know, if you know the UK crowd, it's going to be, being at that time, it's going to be a wild, wild crowd, right? I'm assuming it ain't going to be a family friendly arena. So, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's good to be good to be home, good to be fine at home, and all those things. I was going to ask about that, mate, because in some ways I feel like you probably got the shittest time because you're right in the middle of the like the night. You can't kind of go early morning and try and get up early, and you can't stay up late. And you know you're right in the yeah. real bad sweet spot. So how does that affect camp? Does that affect training? Is what point do you switch things up and start training at different times, or is that not part of the plan? Oh, yeah, that's definitely that's definitely the plan. A few a few people, I think it was Dan Hardy. I see you talking about it, saying um, best to go abroad and do your camp like Vegas, and then stick on that time and come back. Uh, I did think of that, but then obviously you have the problem of being you'd be jet lagged twice because you have to travel there, yeah. and then jet lag coming back. I'm no expert as well, but like doing a bit of research on it, mm. but then I think it would mess you up a little bit more. If your body clock is adjusted to that time zone, yeah. except the daylight and the time is different. So if you flew in from say Vegas, you're on the same clock yeah. for the schedule for the fight, but then the sunlight and all that schedule will mess you up. So yeah, it, I think it works out actually better to be here. As people are saying it's an away advantage, whatever. It's not. So just a few weeks before I have to flip my training around, probably have one day where I suffer and sort of lose a bit of sleep. But that'll, that'll, that'll be fine. There's been a lot of debate about it. I mean, I don't I don't think there's any UK fans who are happy about it. Can I can I ask before before I say this? Were you at 204 in Manchester all those years ago? Because that was the last comparison that we have. Yeah, actually, funnily enough, I was supposed to fight on that card. I got uh, I pulled off like two weeks before. Mm. Uh, I was out in Canada training. I was supposed to fight. Well, he's now a teammate of mine, Massad Bektik. But um, I got ill like two weeks before I was messed up. I put zero thought into it then. Like, I literally like, didn't even register that the card was at that time. Mm. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And now, I feel like, in hindsight, like, what an idiot. But, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I was supposed to be on that card. But um, definitely uh, a little bit less of a professional then than I am now. Because mm. now, obviously, I'm like, right, I'm doing a bit of research. Uh, I think Leon's bringing in, like, a, a sleep expert or... So I'm going to hopefully nick some pointers off him and uh, get that, you know, he's got that champion money. He's bringing in all the experts and stuff. So just get hang around and ask questions, you know. That probably shows the difference between young Arnold and maybe the older version of older, more experienced yeah. Arnold now. Um, yeah, that's but, it. But you're 5-0 and in the UK in the UFC. I mean, the last time out against Dan Hooker, the crowd went crazy for for your fight and obviously that, that stoppage. Do you see it as an advantage fighting at home? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, and no. Obviously, like mm. familiarities, all those things, all the comforts and things like that. But I don't. To be honest, I don't think it makes a difference. It's not. Uh, it's not football per se, right? Where you go to the away stadium, you got mm. you know the fans there all for you. Maybe more so that, but like then sometimes that could be a hindrance. The fans cheer you on a bit more. You mm. maybe take risks you wouldn't otherwise. So there's there's a give and take with anything, but just the comforts outside of the fight being at home are, are the nice things you know the familiarities of yeah. where you are and all that and by saying that i'm gonna have to find some like late night services or something to get some food in manchester i don't know 24 hour diners or something i like asking this to the uk fighters but at what point do you start receiving the mess text messages or instagram dms from people you've not never heard of in a while old school mates or whatever asking for tickets what at what point in camp to start do you start Wait, getting with those? the when the rumours of the, the card happened, when the rumours that there's going to be a UFC in the UK, like before my fight was even announced, I was getting people asking me. I was like, mate, I'm not even on it. Mm. But yeah, uh, it's, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's going to be in high demand, even though it's going to be at whatever time it is. But, um, you know, 
Um, that one, uh, was it 204 you said? Two That or four. one was that one was pretty wild. I've seen obviously the fights from it and uh I don't think that made it look any less and it like you wouldn't know that the main event was at five AM, right? So mm. It doesn't take any obviously you guys might be slightly compromised, but it doesn't take away from the gravity. It's still a huge fight for every one of your careers, Yeah. you know. It was gonna I was going was going to ask you as well, because you've obviously said then you're staying in England for this camp. And is the decision on that based solely on the fact that you'll be fighting in the UK and you don't want to switch up the jet lag? Because I know that over the last number of years you've kind of mixed up and went from where you're based in England and also over to TriStar. So what makes that decision for you? Uh, there's a lot of factors, even things like outside of, um, like training and outside of fights, but like, you know, it's, it's nice to be home. I do get homesick. Like I love, I'm, uh, which I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a, a British patriot, even though at some point people thought I was Canadian cause I was out in Canada so much, but, um, no, it's nice. It was nice to get out there and, and get away and, you know, be nobody and just sort of be buried in my work and my training. But now I think I'm at the point in my career where I've done all those things, built the skills, earned all that stuff, that it's actually nice sometimes to be able to switch off and relax. Mm. So trying to find more of a balance in my career. But yeah, I've always said like TriStar is always a huge, huge part of my career. And uh, I still work closely with Faraz. You know, he's the man. He's still the head coach. He's going to be cornering me for this. And I'm definitely going to be going back there at some point. But yeah, just for now, now is the time to be home. And, and Renegade is a perfect fit for these guys, for this opponent. Um, as it was for uh, Max Holloway, Keita, Dan Hooker, like all those guys are kind of similar frame strikers and we've got that in abundance at Renegade. So that that suits. How, how often are you going down to Renegade? Because I know it's it's about three hours in the car. Yeah, yeah. At the minute, the roads have gone mad. It used to be two something, but um, it's been like mad traffic and like a crash every other day. Literally sat in traffic for like, I trained locally today. I literally drove half an hour this morning to go boxing. And I sat in traffic for about an hour and a half getting home. So I was just like, geez. But um, three days a week. So Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, I'm up there. Yeah. I love it. Um, let's talk about your opponent, as you mentioned, Giga Chikadze. Um, Give me your overall scouting report. What do you think he does well? And where do you think are areas you're looking to exploit? Oh, I mean, the things he does well are obvious, right? Mm. He's a very good kickboxer. Um. A good finisher, great kicks, great punches, good boxing, kicking. His knees are fantastic. He's long, he's rangy. He's tough as old boots as well. Like you mm. see him take a pace in against Kea and uh, he didn't give up. He kept coming forward, kept working. Yeah, he's tough, man. He got he got rocked against Barboza and, and finished him. So, and you just see that fight with Lerone on the weekend. Barboza is tough and uh, Chikaz took him out. So, he's a tough, tough guy. From a top team as well, a really good good team, good coaches, good training partners. So, you know, I'm sure they're going to be well prepared and they're expecting the best of me as I'm expecting the best of them. So it's going to be, it's going to be a good fight. You know, like, I find these kind of fights bring the best out of people. I'm sure it bring the best out of him. It's going to bring the best out of me. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Could be a could be a fun stand up war. You know, is there a similar opponent you fought in your career that you think is? I mean. Giga's obviously got, you know, extremely high kickboxing credentials, but is there someone who you fought previously who you can kind of apply that camp or that strategy to? Um, Range-wise, like height-wise, probably like Dan Hooker, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, Dan, Dan Hooker's long, good kickboxer, but not that level. And the only thing, Dan Hooker's taller. His knees were more of a thing. His yeah. punches were longer, the kicks are longer. but So that was more of a, there was more emphasis on that in the camp. Mm. Uh. I've met Giga in person and uh, he, ain't, he ain't nowhere near as tall as Dan Hooker, so I know mm. that much. But yeah. You, you mentioned the Cater fight there and obviously that's a former opponent of you both. Um, I mean, it's his only loss in his UFC career and Calvin, to, to win that fight, basically had to push the pace, get inside, boxing and yeah. an elbow range and really kind of, you know, just not give him a second, essentially. Is, when you look at that, is that almost the, the, the game plan to beat Giga is to get past those kicks and into that boxing and an elbow range in your mind? Uh, Kate is a very different fighter than me. He's like, mm. he's Kate just works in straight lines and he's quite slow, but like he's mm. like very consistent with the slow, you know what I mean? Mm. Not, not a bad way, like he's in your face, non stop pressure. I kind of do a little bit different, so mm. but yeah, getting past the kicks is obviously the strategy, mm. but um, yeah, just yeah, that's that's it, just that's it, be <laughs> ready for those.
Yeah. You know? Uh, I want to bring you back to the last couple of fights. I mean, I'm going to include the Evil Web fight in kind of 2023 because mm. it was right at the start of the year. But you go on this incredibly long win streak and then, you know, you have the Max fight and then you have the Evil Web fight. So since we haven't spoke since since before the Max fight was the last time we caught up, how do you reflect yeah. on those two experiences? Yeah, the Max fight, um, you know, it's frustrating. Everything was sort of, you get on that big win streak. I asked for it like an idiot. And, um, you know, you get it, you get what you ask for. It's very rare that I ask for anything, let alone mm. get what I do ask for. So, yeah. you know, I asked for it and I got it. And uh, it would just seem right. Like, this was the one, beat Max, make a statement, get the title shot. Like, you know, win there, you can't question, you can't, there's no questions to be asked, right? What are you going to say? Don't give that guy a title shot. Like, 100% beat mm. Max, I would have got a title shot. Um, actually, even annoying, I took the Cater fight. I think it was six weeks notice coming off injury and uh you know that, that was something the winner of that was gonna get a potential interim or mm. title shot yeah and uh obviously that never happened so i was like right well what you can't deny me against max so give me yeah. max um yeah it's very frustrating he he switched up his style he um we watched all his tape all my coaches watched all his tape we i watched this i watched all his fights he pressures he comes forward um you counter him he answers that by coming forward more and pressuring more and now he comes back reinvigorated changes his style he's sort of high pressure but he's moving non-stop high pressure but he's moving he's not there to be hit now before he was always there to be hit mm. now he's like always 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 there pressuring you but he's not necessarily there to hit and it's a very weird thing to see and it looked like he perfected that against uh Gaethje in the last one like he did the same yeah. thing but like twice as good, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he took the pressure up another level. So it was like when he did that against me, it was like he was trying a new style. I was still catching him with some shots and, you know, I, I felt like I had success, but mm. it was it was not what we prepared for. I, I prepared literally just to stand there. He was going to run at me and I'm going to hit him and move. And uh, mm. it was the opposite. I ended up chasing him, you know? So mm. yeah, yeah, very good. Very good on his part and changing his style at that part of his career recognizing there was a problem and uh making the necessary adjustments and obviously the last one against most far just as well obviously how do you reflect i mean a very close fight i personally and obviously i'm biased because we have a relationship but trying to take bias out of it i did think you got probably one and three so how do you reflect on that one yeah that's that's what i felt as well so uh you know maybe just go forward like we're on a win so it is mm. what it is um it's frustrating you know all, all the little things considered um Obviously, the Holloway one is bigger than that. I still, ultimately, I feel like I won. You know, I, yeah. I didn't get outclassed and get outskilled, whatever. It is what it is. I got out judged, maybe. I don't know. But um, yeah, that's no knock on the confidence, nothing. It's just annoying. Literally, it's just mm. annoying. I don't think it puts me any further down. I know in the rankings it put me down, but whatever. Mm. Um, I think go out there and make a statement here. Probably puts me in a better position. Who knows when Everwell's going to fight? I know he wants to fight. Um, I think Sterling was saying something. Mm. Sterling keeps putting tweets out every time he said about me. I oh, man, you know I got a fight booked. Like, why is he said? Why even put me as a suggestion? You know, like put someone like uh, Diego Lopez or Larone even. That's a good fight. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah, like Everwell. Ask for someone who's available. <laughs> That's stay on them for you. But when you when you talk about, I mean, we obviously hear this quote a lot with John Kavanagh. You know, you win or you learn type of thing. And obviously, you went on this extremely, uh, mm. extremely long and dominant run. But those two fights against Max, you you know, you, we look at what Max has just done a three hundred masterful performance. We look at Evo, an undefeated guy. How much did you learn from those experiences with the the eight rounds in the cage with those two? Um, main thing in the Holloway one, just just like. This first time fighting a full fight, or like going the five rounds, mm. and to go the five rounds and push the pace with like the king of five rounders, probably the most. I don't know if that's a fa a stat, but I feel like he probably has the most five round fights, right? Something possibly like him or maybe John John Jones would be the only other yeah, one. Yeah, right. It's one of those guys, isn't it? Mm. So he's got so much five round experience, and not only that, he's, he's like notoriously known for pushing the pace. So mm. being able to like keep pace and push the pace with him, and you know to stand toe to toe with him and and other things go on and stuff like that and i'm proud of the performance when we know like my team the preparation and like mm. things that weren't 
as good as they could have been. And I've, I've probably been fitter for three round fights, you know, so to still have the five round cardio and like be able to push in that. So that's, that's something I'm happy about. The last one, just uh, things learned. Like, because I felt like I won, the only things I learned is just maybe don't knee him in the head with his hands. That I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Uh, my wrestling defense got really good. I know that. Like, one of the best guys at stalling people out and taking them down and, um, you know, controlling, couldn't keep me down. I think he got me to a hip. He never actually got like good control on the ground or anything. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's something I'm happy about. Me and my team worked on that a lot. Um, maybe probably the second round, I think I got a bit too cocky. Like in my head, I felt so fast. I was just like, you know what, I'm ahead of this guy. He can't hit me. Mm. And the next thing, hands down, I walked into a shot and I'm like literally in the fight thinking, like, I'm thinking to myself, you fucking idiot. Like that was literally the thought <laughs> I had in my head. It's just like, what are you doing? Like uh yeah, like I remember everything going on. I was just like thinking, you donut, <laughs> what, mm. what are you doing? But um, yeah, that was my my bad, just sort of getting ahead of myself. So maybe that, like I heard Holloway talk about it on, um, on uh, Joe Rogan's thing. He was like, the Gaethje fight, something he wanted to focus on was being on the whole fight. For five mm. rounds, he was on, like switched yeah. on. And uh, maybe that's something I could have done there. Because I feel the like second round was going great. Which is yeah. that only thing that you definitely obviously won the round was that that shot that knocked down to a knee. So yeah, yeah. If I was switched on for that that exchange, obviously I would have won the fight. So yeah, that that's annoying. Mm. No, but it's good because I think you you've took the right mentality. What you should treat as as a win because you know obviously you never got your hand raised, but it was so close. And as I say, that many people thought that you did get deserve the victory. That that's nice to hear. Um. What have you made of the featherweight division? I mean, I feel like it's kind of strange at the moment. There's a there's a mm. question about who's going to fight Taporia next. There's a couple of like the old guard with the likes of Emmett, Calvin Cater, Bryce Mitchell, who were coming off yeah. you know, lost recent losses. So, what have you made of one forty five as a whole? It's a, uh, I mean, it's always been a hot division. It like, mm. uh, I think when you get to like featherweight to welterweight, it's probably around like your. Average man average size, size. So you get the yeah. most talent. You get most gyms you go in. There's like a lot of lightweights sort of around mm. that way. So yeah, yeah, that's kind of where the most of the guys are. So they tend to be the most stacked divisions. But um, yeah, the 145 division is good, man. It's got some really good up and coming guys like Diego Lopez or someone he's killing it. Lerone just put an amazing performance the other day against Edson, so he's now up there. Uh, Al Jermaine's now in in the um, in the mix with everyone. Obviously, uh, most fires up there. I think he's like number four. Just you need some of those old guys to fight, like these guys coming up, right? So mm. this would be my second fight now, fighting down the rankings, and uh, I, I get it. I lost the last two. Whatever, you, whatever I think, you know, I lost the last two. Mm. So whatever. Um, the one before after Holloway, I felt like probably fighting someone like Ortega would have made sense, but then they're like, I have number nine. So mm. then, they, okay, whatever, it is what it is. It feels like you have to be someone or be with the right management to get the right matchups. To that makes sense, right? Yeah. So, kind of like Corey Sanhagen, he's fighting. Uh, was he in Umar. Umar? He's he's like number nine. Is he ten or nine? The, I think I he's remember. double figures. I think he's eleven or twelve. I think he was right, yeah. And like, come on, he's number two. Sanhagen's number two, mm. so it's like. And he also already accepted the fight. Didn't happen. None of his fault. He fought anyway. So, mm. yeah. So, I don't I don't get it. Uh, it's confusing. I don't doubt that guy is... Uh, I don't doubt his ability. He's very good. Mm. He's yeah. very good. I think it's going to be a good fight. Tough test. But I just don't understand what gets that, that skip in the queue, you know? That segues really nicely into my next question because we have a new champion since we last spoke, Ilya Taporia. And as soon as he wins the belt, he starts saying he's not going to fight the top contenders. They, they, you know, Yaya <laughs> Rodriguez, Brian Ortega, Max Holloway, they don't deserve it. What have you yeah. made of the Ilya Taporia experience as champion? Because a lot has gone on in the two or three months since he's he's won that title. Yeah, I mean, he looks good. Like, he's very good. You can't really um, fault him, you know, like all the things he's done, he's been pretty spot on. Um, obviously, he beat, he beat a teammate of mine, Jai Herbert, a lightweight, and mm. You know, I've sparred with Jai a lot. Jai's 
fucking good. You know, he's very good. So they had a back and forth fight. Obviously, he got caught at the end of it. But um, he is he is very good. Obviously, he's the champion. He just knocked out Volk and all that. I still feel like there's like asterisks about him. People are wondering, is he as good? I don't know. Of course he is. You know, of course Yeah. he's that good. He he's beat these guys, and uh, I don't think you get fluke after fluke after fluke. No. So obviously the thing with the Volk, obviously Volk got KO'd. Shouldn't have been in the fight anyway. Should have been resting. But that's the only real asterisk for me. Is like, is that is is the Volkanovski thing? You know, Yeah. but it's hard to tell. Like time is against Volk. He got knocked out of the last two, so that does wear on you. His camps, the camps he did wear on you, they're, they're kind of camps that they take time off you, you know, not, not necessarily like off your life, but your health, your uh, Yeah. your joints, your your body, your body, your will, your will gives up, you know. You go to the well every time. It's like it comes a point where your body's just like, fuck off. <laughs> it's like, we're not doing this again. Like, I'm sure he gets there to camp sometime and his body's just like, we doing it again you know Yeah. that sort of thing so yeah so i don't know maybe you'll never i don't think you'll even see a rematch there you know he, he said no to the rematch didn't he so crazy crazy but um him versus him versus holloway is an interesting fight holloway sort of How do you see that one playing out? i'd like to say i favor holloway but i'm always wrong i uh, just in the styles and and the adjustments he's made in his in his recent couple of fights from me um the way he's changed things up i think that striking style favors but then also on the other hand there's a lot of things we haven't seen from earlier like his wrestling we've seen a little bit of wrestling uh he's a good black belt i know people will roll with him he's a very good black belt from what i hear uh good wrestling of course and you know if he could take down uh holloway and put him on his back and not make it a striking matchup you know that'd be an interesting thing as well Yeah. Well, turning the conversation back to you and your fight for one last question, mate. Give me a walkthrough of the perfect fight day. I'd like to know in the perfect world what happens when Arnold wakes up in the morning to when he goes to sleep at night. It'll be a late one, obviously, but what happens in a perfect world? Well, on a fight day, fight On fight day. day. Hmm. Yeah, I wake up about 2 p.m. probably. When I'm on my thing, 2, 3 p.m. Have my breakfast and uh, be a nice day. And then, uh, yeah, just go in there, do the business, you know. No, uh, no weird shit from anyone. People calling me on the day asking for tickets and we're like, hanging up. Um, yeah, no one's calling for tickets. Uh, my dad's being weird as always, making weird. same weird jokes um but yeah no that's that's it that's always the plan just another day in the office and uh just go out there and get the hand raised you know put a good performance and sort of remind people i'm not just uh i'm not just a youtuber Is is that how you're seeing this as like a you almost have forgot type moment? Like is there a little bit of a little bit of redemption involved in this one? <laughs> um I, I don't know if it's biased because like They're my fans. But when I go on Twitter, like all the guys tag me and they send me things. They say, like, oh, I thought you won this. You probably won that. And um, I mean, I've even seen people say they felt I won against Holloway. And I'm just like, mm, I don't know about that. But um, yeah. So I get a lot of support. So I don't, there's not really many guys giving me shit, which I'm sure all of us fighters and in there received a bit of hate, even if it's just someone having a laugh, you know. So, but I think most of the people that follow me or people even try and give me shit is kind of, I'm on board with it, you know. I like a laugh. If someone calls me a knob, I'm like, I'm down for a joke. So, yeah, maybe that's why no one does it. I don't know. But, um, yeah, no, like, personally, it's like personal redemption, not for Yeah. to prove to anyone. It's just to prove to myself. You know? Yeah, I love it, mate. Well, look, great to see you booked on this car. Great to see you back in action soon. Looking forward to finally watching you in person, mate. It's been a while since we've been doing these chats and you've been all around the world or down south, so it's nice to be able to hopefully be able to watch you in person. Have a safe rest of camp and look forward to seeing you back in action soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you.